Well, hello and good afternoon. This is Professor Peter Gregory for Business 3010 Production Systems. And uh, here's a video review of one of the major topics for Chapter 5, which is Decision Trees. Chapter 5, if you remember, has to do with capacity management. And uh, this is going to bring up some topics you've learned in other classes and need to apply in here. So we're going to bring in uh, some statistics or probability, and we're going to bring in some uh, financial topics uh, in the form of present value, okay? So the example that we're going to go through is 5.2 in the book. Uh, and here I've done a screen copy of it into PowerPoint. This PowerPoint I'll put up on E-Class uh, along with a link to the video, which I plan on uploading to YouTube. Uh, but I'm going to flip over to the internet here, and I'm on McGraw-Hill Connect. So this is the view of the online book that you normally get. And we should be about page 17 plus or minus a page, page in, the, um, in the book, the actual print book. And we're going to go through this example uh, of the decision tree here. Uh, what I'm going to do is come back to here. It's a little bit larger in this window. And you can pause this to read the problem at this point. I'm going to move on, but if you want to pause this, read it, then it will help uh, as I go forward. So the problem that we're looking at here, or the challenge that we're looking at here, is an owner of the hacker's computer store uh, is thinking about what to do for the next five years. So five is going to be a big function in what we consider here. Okay, Sales growth over the past couple of years has been good, but sales could be better. If, a, if an electronics firm moves in, bringing with it employees that are computer literate and computer savvy and really are fan people of computers and they're going to come to the store and buy things and get service done and all that. That's the idea here, okay? Uh, the first strategy is to enlarge the current store. The second strategy is to locate at a new site. And the third strategy is to simply wait and do nothing, which is always an option, okay? The process of expanding or moving would take little time and therefore the store would not lose revenue. So that's virtually uh, instantaneous no matter which decision we either uh, expand or build or go to a new site, okay? If nothing were done the first year and a strong growth occurred, then the decision to expand could be reconsidered. Uh, in other words, if you there's this concept here of uh, high growth versus weak growth, strong growth versus weak growth here, and we could wait a year, and then if there's strong growth, then we could dive in and cons reconsider uh, the paybacks on a couple of the other strategies. But we're gonna that's one of the options is waiting a year. Okay. The assumptions and conditions are as follows. Uh, strong growth as a result of the increased population of computer fa fanatics from the new electronics firm has been uh, a 55% probability. It's been given a 55% probability that you're going to you would experience high growth if this firm comes into the area, drawing all these employees and families with them. Okay, the strong growth with new site will yield $195,000 per year. If you have weak growth and you're at the new site, then it's 115000 Just keep in mind, it costs you to go to the new site. We'll learn about that in a few minutes here. Strong growth with the expansion strategy would give annual returns of 190000 If it were weak growth, after you expand it, you're going to uh, harvest $100,000 a year. Okay. Now, at the existing, if at the existing store there are no changers, there would be returns of $170,000 per year. I guess here they're talking about profits, not sales, okay? So it's the profits there would be $170,000 per year if there is strong growth and $105,000 if the growth is weak. For those paying attention to the numbers, this says that if, there, if you expanded and there was weak growth, your returns of 100,000 is less than if you did nothing and there was a weak return. Got that? So if there was a weak, uh, weak growth and you do nothing, actually comes about better if you do nothing. So notice the numbers as you're going through these things, right? Expansion at the current site would cost $87,000. A move to a new site would cost $210,000. Doing nothing is $0. If growth is strong, existing site is enlarged during the second year, the cost would still be $87,000. Operating costs for all options are equal. Okay. All right, so we made it through all those words. Uh, what would that look like? Okay. Uh, what we could do is head over to Excel and do our best to punch the numbers in here and make a worksheet. One thing is, is that uh, this would be a 
persistent, sustainable tool that you could use going forward in work applications. And you could be adding uh, complexities as you go along. But seriously, these are opportunities to build uh, skills and uh, work, work tools as you're going through school here. Accrue them, hold them onto them in your computer and in a notebook here. And you can apply them at work and uh, be revered as genius. That's why you're here, okay? So when we come to Excel, uh, a quick note here. Uh, for the hybrid uh, course where the print version of the book is not required, I have had to recreate two important appendices. One of them is Appendix G, which is the Z-score table, which I create here, and I've posted that to E-class. I've, I've posted this file to E-class. You will need that for certain problems, and I didn't realize it was missing till today when I went to go use it myself. And that is not used for this problem that we're talking about, but I just happen to have it in the same file here. What we will be using here is a present value of an annuities function or the table. What I've done is calculate out a table, which is Appendix E in the print version of the book, and I have a note into the publishers to find out what gives, why don't we have the appendices online, okay? And uh, this basically shows a something that we'll get into in a Part B of the video here. I'm going to do a Part A and a Part B of the video. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of these things. Okay, so chapter, chapter 5 down here, Chapter 5, the sample decision tree, the example that we have. We've given five years for a forecast right here. Okay, so we want to look at this over five years. And the probability of success is 55%. There's only two outcomes, high, high success or low success. Uh, they're mutually exclusive, and they name both all of the domain of probability here. So once they give you 55% as the high success, you can deduce that low success is 45%. They're complementary. Okay? So let's take some of those words and turn them into a, into a tabulated data here, into a uh, spreadsheet. Okay? So we first saw it as a narrative. Now we're seeing it in tabular form. Okay, and here you go. Here's uh, for strong growth. ST growth probability is 0.55. Okay, I just re relisted it here, even though I have it up here, because we're going to end up using the cell rather than hard coding in five years and these probabilities and even some other things we're going to come up to here. Okay, so to break down the narrative, in a case of a new site and in strong growth, we're told that that situation will. Uh, end up with a return of $195,000 a year. And here I have it in text format, and in here I have it in numeric format. Okay, so this is a, a, a number we can multiply with. This is just text. It doesn't know that that's a number. Okay. All right. After five years, our gross uh, of $195,000 uh, per year, the gross value of that contract would be each year, which is a, a steady annuity if you want to look at it that way, of five years, five times 195,000 is 975,000 dollars. Okay, so if I click on that, we can see that I used the cells up here. Uh, I multiplied the annual uh, return times the prob uh, times the number of years, which is five. Okay, so I'm using Excel to its for the benefits there. Okay, now we're told coming up that we need to take out $210,000 it costs us to go to this new site, okay? So uh, in this cell here, we take the gross run-up of five years here, and we subtract out a cost, of, and it's located at E17 down here, uh, down here below. We'll work our way down to that, okay? So the second number that we can calculate is in a new market. If there were weak growth, then that's $115,000 a year. Gross that up by five years, that's $575,000 there. And if we take out our $210,000 it costs us to get to that new site, then we really only net out at $365,000, all right? So the next option we had was to expand, okay? So here's the two cases coming up for expansion. Uh, one of them is strong growth, one of them is weak growth. That'd be $190,000 versus $100,000. We gross that up for five years. That's $950,000 for five years or $500,000 a year or $500,000 for the five years, okay? From each of these, we're going to subtract what we were told to subtract was $87,000 that it costs to do the expansion, okay? And when we do that, we end up with $863,000 and we end up with 413000 
reflective of strong or weak growth, okay? The third case has a neat little addition to it that is more than, makes it more than just straightforward. But let's go ahead and calculate out what's, uh, if we do a nothing, do the do, do nothing scenario here, uh, we were told that it was worth $170,000 in a strong growth market, but only one hundred and five dollars in a weak growth market. And so if we gross that up by five years, that's $850,000 over five years, or on the low end, $525,000, okay? Just as a note, any part of this that is already making sense you don't want to listen to, you can use the YouTube, uh, go to the gearbox, and you can speed this up to as much as two times the speed, and uh, no problems there. That's probably what I'd be doing if I were actually listening to this uh, video, is speeding it forward. But just a hint there, it'll speed this thing up for you, okay? Uh, lower down here, I'd actually just calculate it in there. I think I hard-coded these in, right? These are just numbers we're given. So I'd hard-coded in what's the expansion cost, 87000 what's the new site cost, 210 We used these up here to make our calculations. So it's really nice to set up a control box uh, with these numbers that you're going to use over and over again. And then if they change, or if you want to do sensitivity analysis and change them around a little bit and see if scenarios change any, then... Uh, you just have to change it once up here. Like if we wanted to go to six years and I type in six, watch the numbers change. Boom. Okay. Um, so we can take a look at six years. So I'm going to control Z out of that. That's an undo. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have somewhat of a base case working for us. And we need to go and talk about the probability function here now because we need to look at how we do. Uh, the summation of these, if you will, discounted by probability outcomes, okay? So our outcome, our net outcomes are listed here, but we have to apply these probabilities in some way that helps us make a decision here, okay? Because one, some paths are more likely than others. So I'm going to come back to PowerPoint, okay? So I'm going to come back to PowerPoint, and we've seen it as a narrative. We've seen it as tabulated data in worksheet of an Excel file. What does this thing look like as a drawing, as a chart, as a tree diagram here? Okay, so here's Hacker's Computer Store. What can we expect? We have three options. We can make a move. We can expand it where we are. Or we could do nothing. Okay, so whenever there's options, we use this little square icon here at this joint. And then for any one of these decisions, we were told wherever one of these uh, circles ap appears, that basically that is a point where we've rolled the dice and now we're letting the probabilistic things out of our control take place so we can do an evaluation. And what we do is we draw this tree. We show the move branch, the expand branch, the do nothing branch. And that, these are the branches of options that we have. And for either one of them, we're going to evaluate them uh, at the point where they have strong growth and weak growth. Okay. So for each of these, what we've already done is we've taken the revenue. Now here they're talking about revenue. So they're kind of flip-flopping their nomenclature as to what we're looking at here. Is it a return, which is normally a profit, or is it our hard sales or revenue here? I always love to pick these problems apart, and it's a great chore to make it consistent uh, when you're writing a book, obviously, because uh, they kind of flip-flopped on their nomenclature here. So let's go by revenue, okay? So our sales minus the moving cost, we just calculated for these four cases, okay? The next case is going to be a little bit interesting because we're going to wait a year, okay? And if we wait a year, th what does that mean? That means that we're going to watch to see whether there's strong growth or weak growth. If there's weak growth, we're going to continue doing nothing, okay? There's no reason to go upscale or up uh, invest and in, in try to do anything differently, right? So here's the probabilistic outcome is if it were weak growth, we're just going to run it out for four more years, total of five years at the weak growth rate, okay? So we're going to come back over here and we'll calculate that, okay? If we, if we looked at it, we do the do nothing and there's a weak growth, we had five times 105,000, there's that $525,000 sitting there. Let's go back to the chart here, okay? But if we wait a year and there is strong growth, then we can decide whether with the remaining four years we should do an expansion, which is going to cost us $87,000 for what added profit, or do nothing. Is doing nothing better than expanding? Okay. So we're going to apply these probabilities here to outcomes. Okay. 
And to do that, we'll come in here, and you get to see a flash forward on where we're going to go with this. I'm going to delete this because I've already gone through this a few times here, and the software crashed, and that's why I'm doing this one last time. Okay, and the process that we're using here in statistics and probability is just as we had before I'll draw a chart here let's say we have five options that we could play okay instead of three or two or three we had three options here and uh, you know we have a and we have B and we have C and we have D D and we have E okay I'm just going to explore one of these options. We're, we're going to go through a little um, example problem here about how to do this, okay? So let's inspect option C here. And let's say in our instance, instead of having three options, we now have five, okay? So from our, our own problem, we only had three options, but now we have five. Keep that straight, okay? And instead of two outcomes, we have a possibility of three. And let's pick as our three outputs the chance to get hundred thousand dollars okay or five thousand dollars the the outcome of some financial event will be a hundred thousand to us five thousand to us or one thousand to us okay and what if they had just about equal probability of happening let's say there's a 34 percent chance that you'd get a hundred thousand dollars 33 percent chance you'd get five and 33 percent chance that you'd get one thousand well, we're trying to find the expected value here, and the way that you do that is you do, do a weighted sum of these mutually exclusive outcomes whose probabilities add up to 100%, okay? So these are mutually exclusive, and they cover the entire outcome probabilities. Nothing's going to be surprising. No, no surprise will come up as, like, a fourth outcome in this, okay? Okay. So now what do we need to do? We need to take the probability times the outcome here. Excuse that phone call, all right? <clears throat> so we have the probability times the outcome, uh, 0.34 times $100,000, okay? Plus, I'm going to put a big plus here, times 33% times the 5,000 plus... 33% times the 1,000, okay? And we're going to add all of that up, and we're going to see what the expected value of this event happens. If we make decision C, <coughs> excuse me, what is the expected value of the outcome? And we can paint in our little circle here, which indicates that this node this, re re this reflects or represents uh, a probabilistic outcome, something that we don't have control over. We have to wait for the dice to stop rolling and see what happens, okay? So let's take this to Excel, okay? And I'm going to punch that in directly. 0.344 uh, is the probability of 100,000. And I'm just going to put in 100 here, round it off, cut off the thousands, okay? Uh, plus 33% times the second possible outcome, which is $5,000, uh, plus 33% times $1,000, okay? So that's what we just had in the other draw type page here, and I hit enter, and the expected outcome is 30, $35,980 there, can't even say it, $35,980. Okay, so that's the number that we just calculated over here, 3598, and we'll just go to 36 and round it. Okay, so the expected value of those probabilities and the outcomes are $36,000. Okay, so that's a probability function or portion of understanding these decision trees. Okay, nothing too hard there, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's take a look at our problem. Okay, so if we go to this other page, and once again, I am going to delete this and redo it. Pardon my font, it's even worse here than on the board, but uh, that has to do with the drawing pad that I'm using here. All right, okay. So now in our problem, how do we apply this? We had three options, to, and each of these, there was some probability happening. So we could go new or move, I guess they say, um, they say uh, 
move is what they call it. We could expand or we could do nothing. And no matter which decision we go with here is there's a strong or a weak uh, financial success that comes out of this and the strong success is 55% and the weak success is 45 and if we go back to our tables and grab the numbers now the the outcome here was seven hundred sixty five thousand dollars right and the outcome if we move for a weak economy or a weak reaction was three hundred sixty five thousand dollars three sixty five Right? And the way that we're going to come out with the expected value here is 55% of 765 plus 45% of 365, just like the little example I just did there. So if we come back here, all right, let's see how that's done, okay? All right. <clears throat> and if you look at the formula that I actually used in this cell, all right, uh, we said B4, which is the 55% times the net strong growth outcome plus let me go back there plus 45 percent which is b5 times the weak reaction or the weak results you know the result out of the weak market there and when we add them together as we did in the formula up here five hundred eighty five thousand dollars okay so if we come back over here and we look at uh the next case i want to be able to get is uh, these numbers here, oh, let me do that again. Actually, these numbers here is what, are what we want to do. We want to ca capture 863 and uh, 413. Eight sixty three and four thirteen. Okay, fifty five percent here, forty five percent chance there, and if we simply use Excel to calculate that. We have it forever, and there's the equation we use. There's that B4 and B5. That's the 40, 55 and 45% times the two different outcomes here. We add them together, and we get 660000 Wow, we're right out of the boot here. We can show the expected value of just expanding is significantly, not just a little bit, but significantly higher than, it's about 10% higher <clears throat> than, the, uh, than the move option that we had, 660 versus 585. Okay, without giving away too much here, okay, let's take a look at what we need to figure on doing nothing, okay? So if we go back to the nicely drawn graph here, the expected value here is going to be 45% times five years of the weak growth, which was 105, 105,000, right? Okay. But when we come up to the strong growth, we've waited a year, and once we've waited a year, we decide whether we want to... Uh, take an option to expand or do nothing. Don't leave your options. Don't take options off the table. All right. So let's take a look at expansion versus doing nothing. Okay. <clears throat> so the f five five years of the weak growth doing nothing is going to just be this number here, that five twenty five. Okay. But how do we calculate the number we need to put in for the expected value here? Okay, so let's go to the drawing board here. And we have basically this route here. There's a decision. Okay, <clears throat> actually, this is, this is the uh, probabilistic node here because we said we came up on strong growth here and this was the weak growth. So this is just five times 105, $105,000, which is uh, what? Five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. All right, that was a pretty simple route. Um, if we waited a year and nothing good happened, then we're not going to take any chances. We bail through here, and we might be thinking about a whole other business because we want to make a lot of money. Okay, a lot more money. Put it that way. Okay. So if we come up this this direction, if it's strong, what they're saying is up here is where we have another decision. Do we want to expand? Okay. And just for reference, they didn't give us an option to consider doing the the move or the build. Okay. Okay. Or we could do nothing. 
Okay, so what is the value if it was strong here and we decide to do nothing? We're still on the strong path here. Let's go get that number. And so in the nothing column, $170,000 is what we got every year if it turned out we did nothing and it were, and it were strong. Okay, so $170,000 times that is 850 you could do that in your head or in Excel or hopefully not on your calculator because Excel is so much better okay all right so so if we just go through and do still do nothing up there it comes out to 850 what happens if we do expansion well if we do an expansion it's gonna be only it's gonna be ending up being that this path we would have earned hundred and seventy thousand dollars remember that during the first year right we said things went well and in that case, if we do nothing and things went well, we would expect to make $170,000 that year. So it's going to be $170,000 plus four years in the expansion good times. Expansion good times is 190. Okay, so it's 170 plus four times 190. But all of that minus your $87,000. Let's go calculate that in Excel. All right. Equals 170 plus 4 times 190. So we're looking at $930,000. But what if we take out 87? Oops, yes. Did I do that right? Equals that minus the 87,000, okay, is $843,000, okay? So this interesting path here, um, where we uh, were successful, we had a high growth rate, but then we were taking a look at, we're analyzing whether we should expand it during this year. Its value is only worth 843, right? There's the 843 there, okay? compared to what if we did nothing up here was 850. So interestingly enough, it's underwater. It's $7,000 underwater. You wouldn't choose to do the expansion because you only have four years to get your $87,000 cost back again, okay? Right, so if you really pick these problems apart, it represents a really neat actual business problem here, okay? So you'd be underwater, uh, you're doing um, opportunity costs here, so the opportunity cost <clears throat> is positive if you go through the expansion part here and compare it to what could have happened, your minus $7,000 is your opportunity cost. You're out $7,000, okay? If you compared doing nothing to doing the expansion, you're up $7,000 in, in uh, opportunity cost, okay? All right, so we, we have all these numbers, and now we have to go take a look at our network again of what's going on here. So what ends up happening is this path up here of expansion, we're not going to consider, so we can cut that off. We sever it right now, get rid of it. And we said this is, a winning, this is our winning strategy is to just do nothing through that win. But we'd still have to take into effect that there was a decision here and the probability of what's going to happen here, uh, we still have to, to calculate this, all right? Okay, so the probability is 55% of 850, that number there, and 45% of 525,000. So if we just go hard code over here, all right? So I'm going to type that in. So what did we say? This is equal to... 55% times $850,000 plus 45% probability of $525,000. So our expected path there is 703, which I had already calculated over here. See this? So here's the clean numbers over here. This is the expected value out of uh, out of uh, moving, and this is the expected value out of expanding, and this is the expected value out of doing nothing. And lo and behold, doing nothing has the highest expected value. 
by on the order of uh, like seven or eight percent. Okay, so you, 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 the difference between six hundred and sixty and seven hundred and three is something like forty over six sixty is on the order of seven or eight percent, something like that, right? Okay, so if you in the world of expect expected values, if no new information came in and you had to lock and load today on what to do on a decision, you would choose to do nothing. Isn't that amazing? We went through an entire problem and I love that because you don't always have to do something. Okay. So this is part A and all I'm going to do in part B all quote unquote is apply present value using the annuity table. Now, why is that different than the base case we studied? In the base case, every cash flow in the future, we regressed, we, we brought it back to the um, present by uh, individually discounting each of those future cash payments that we're going to get, cash flows. In our case here, uh, we, would, we do have a sense where once things set up, we have a repeating number of the cash flow size comes in every period about the same. And when we do that, or when it's exactly the same over the same periods, then you can use the annuity approach to this. It gets used in the example, but it doesn't get explained. And that's why I'm going to make a big point of it. So I'm going to cut this video here and then add in the second part as a second video. Thanks much. And thank you for listening.